Rip Van Winkle. This story, found in a pile of papers, was written by a man named Dietrich Knickerbocker. He lived in New York. He was very interested in stories of the Dutch people who lived there. He loved to read books, but most of his stories came from talking with people. The stories he heard helped to show the history of the place. When he saw a Dutch family living in a low house under a big tree, he would get very excited. He was always extra polite to those people. The stories he heard were made into a book. It showed the history of the area. It was not a history book, but it was about people, and it had many stories that showed how people lived. He was not a very great writer, but he was very careful. To write only what he had heard. When people first read his book, they didn't believe it, but after they studied it, they found it was true. He died after his book was finished, but it never became important. Some people didn't like him; they were angry because there were some funny stories about them in the book. But Mr. Knickerbocker never wanted to hurt anyone. He just wrote what he had heard, and tried to tell the truth. Everyone knew that was the way he was, even the people that were angry. Some people liked him very much. A baker even made some cookies with Mr. Knickerbocker's face on them. If you have gone up the Hudson River, you must have seen the Catskill Mountains. The colors of the mountains are always changing. Many people even know the weather by the colors of the mountains. At the bottom of these mountains are many little villages. All that you might see would be the tops of the houses or some smoke from a fire. Some of these houses are very old. Some even have bricks that came from Holland. The villagers brought them when they first came to America. In a house like that. They lived in a nice fellow named Rip Van Winkle. This was before the place became America. And because it was so long ago, I can't be sure which house he lived in. The first Van Winkles who came from Holland were strong and kind men. They worked very hard every day. Rip Van Winkle was kind, but he didn't work very hard. His heart was very good. His wife was very strong and was always telling him what to do. Some people believe that God gives us trouble so that we learn about life and become better people. They feel that a mean and troublesome wife is a blessing from God. Well, then God really blessed Rip Van Winkle. All the wives of the village liked Rip. They often met and talked about the troubles of the Van Winkles. Rip Van Winkle never told them anything about his wife, but they always knew what happened. The wives of the village knew everything, and they would always say that Mrs. Van Winkle was the problem. The children of the village liked him too. They were always happy to see him. He taught them how to fly kites. He showed them how to shoot marbles, but best of all, he told them stories about ghosts, witches, and Indians. Even the dogs liked him; they would never bark at him and always wag their tails when they saw him. There was one problem with Rip: he did not like to work for money. I'm not saying he was lazy because he was not lazy. Sometimes. He would sit and fish all day, or carry a small gun and go walking in the mountains for a long, long time. If anyone needed help on their farm, Rip would help all day long. He would even help build the stone walls, which was very heavy, hard work. The only work he wouldn't do was his own. His fences were the worst in the area. His farm had the most weeds. And it would always rain just when he started to work outside. His children always had the worst clothes, 
All he could grow was a little corn and potatoes. But Rip Van Winkle was still happy. No matter what went wrong, he always seemed happy. He would be happy with whatever God gave him. He would go hungry and have only a penny instead of working for a pound. If he had been alone, he would have been perfectly happy. But his wife always grumbled. Why wasn't he out in the field working? Why was he so lazy? She would say, morning, noon, and night. She told him what she wanted him to do. And when she wasn't telling him what to do, she was telling him to do it faster, or better, or more often. Rip had only one thing he could do. When his wife got angry, he would shake his head and look up and say nothing. This would make his wife angrier. So Rip would go to the only side, where it was quiet, the outside. Rip had one loyal friend that was his dog, Wolf. Mrs. Van Winkle hated Wolf. When Rip and Wolf were hunting, they were happy. Wolf was brave. He was the bravest animal in the woods. But as soon as he came home, he would be very quiet. He would always look to where Mrs. Van Winkle was sitting and stay away. When she was angry, nobody was brave. And as time passed, Mrs. Van Winkle did not get any softer. She yelled even more. And Rip would go out into the town. He would sit under a large tree with some other man. They would sit and talk about life and some problems. And sometimes they would get a newspaper from a traveler. Then they would talk about the news. They would all listen while Derek Van Bommel was reading the paper to them. He was the best reader, and he knew all the words. But the most important man there was Nicholas Feather. He was the old man who owned the inn. He would sit under the tree all day. He would only move when the sun got hot. He didn't talk a lot, and he always was smoking a pipe. That was how people knew his feelings. When he was angry, he blew short puffs of smoke, and when he was happy, he would blow the smoke out slowly and smile a little smile. But Mrs. Van Winkle even came here to find Rip. She would be very angry and talk in a loud voice. No one talked while she was scolding Rip, not even Nicholas Feather. Finally, Rip would go into the ooze. It was the only place where his wife couldn't find him. He liked to sit under a big tree and share some food with Wolf. Poor Wolf, he would say. I know that Mrs. Van Winkle is mean to you too, but as long as I live, I will always be your friend. Then Wolf would turn his head a little and wag his tail. Wolf and Rip spent many hours in the quiet woods together. One day in late autumn, Rip and Wolf went hunting. They were high up and away from the village. Rip and Wolf had been walking all day. They were tired. Then they came to an open area on a small hill. They sat down and looked out. Way down below. He could see the Hudson River. Across the river, he could see more mountains and hills. The shadows of the mountains were getting long, and the sun would go down soon. Then it would be dark. He should be getting home. His wife would be very angry with him, and Wolf for being late. He looked out at the river and breathed a deep, slow, soft breath. Then he heard someone call his name. Rip Van Winkle, Rip Van Winkle. He looked around. There was no one there. A crow flew slowly across the sky. Maybe it's just a dream, he thought. He turned and started to leave. Rip, Rip Van Winkle. This time, Wolf growled. Then looked down into the trees. Rip couldn't say anything. He just looked down into the trees too. There he saw something strange. It looked like a small man. 
The man was carrying something on his back. Why was this little man coming here? Rip couldn't think of any answer. Who was this little man? What was he carrying? And the strangest thing was, thought Rip, how did he know my name? The little man asked Rip to help him. Rip was a little afraid, but went to help him anyway. The little man was dressed like an old Dutchman. He had big pants with buttons down one side. He was carrying a keg of beer. Well, Rip helped the man carry his keg of beer up a stream that was dried. There were rocks but no water. As they went higher into the mountains, Rip heard the thunder. When he heard it, he stopped and looked up. Then taking a deep breath, he went on. At last, they came to a small clearing in the mountains. They were in a soft grass place. There were trees growing in a circle around them. When Rip looked up, he saw that the sky was turning to night. The blue sky was turning to red and purple. Neither Rip nor the little man said anything. They both just stood and looked up at the sky. Then Rip looked around to see where he was. Now he saw things he didn't have time to see. When he first got there, in the middle of the area was a group of other little men playing nine pins. They were wearing old side clothes. Some had big pants. Some carried knives in their belts. They had strange faces. One had a big face with little eyes. Another one had a large nose. It was so big there was very little room for his tiny eyes and mouth. They all had beards. One of them was the leader. His face was brown and old. He had a tall hat on his head and red socks with tall shoes. And there were roses in his shoes. The whole group of little men seemed strange to Rip. He remembered an old painting he had seen long before. Then he looked at the little old man. He smiled to himself. Rip looked at them again. They were playing a game, but none of them were smiling. They looked like they were angry. They never laughed. The only noise he heard was the loud noise of the ball knocking the pins down. Then the sound would echo through the mountains. When Rip and the little man he helped walked closer to the group, the other men all stopped playing. They all looked very angry. Rip stopped. His heart pounded. The little friend told Rip to wait, and he went to pour beer for the others. Rip could not move. He felt scared. Then, little by little, Rip saw that the men were not looking at him, so he drank a little of the beer. It was cold and good. It was the best beer he had ever drunk. He wanted a little more. Well. Soon, Rip had drunk more than a little. He drank so much that he got sleepy. His head felt heavy. Then his eyes closed. Rip fell fast asleep. When Rip woke up, he saw the green grass and trees. The sun was bright. It was early in the morning. He heard the birds singing in the trees. Oh no! Thought Rip. I slept all night. Then he remembered the little man. And the beer that he had drunk, he remembered the river with no water. He remembered the party, the clothes, and the game of nine pins, and Rip remembered the beer, the beer. Oh, that beer! Thought Rip. What should I tell my wife? She will be upset. No, she will be angry. No, she will want to kill me. Rip closed his eyes, and leaned back. His hand touched the ground and looked for his gun. When he touched it, he opened his eyes and looked at it. He was surprised. It was old and rusted. The wood was eaten by bugs. The metal part was falling apart. Those men had taken his gun, and left an old one. And where was Wolf? Wolf, Wolf called Rip. He whistled, but Wolf didn't come. Rip wanted to look where the man had been playing nine pins, but as he stood up. His body was tired and sour. I shall never sleep on grass again," thought Rip. 
The ground is too hard. But then, Rip saw something he had never seen before. The stream that was dry now had water in it. A lot of water. The path that he had walked before was gone. There were tall bushes and plants growing all around. And where the men were playing nine pins, Rip couldn't see anything. All he could see was a big waterfall. Rip didn't know what to think. He turned and looked around. Wolf! Wolf! called Rip. Where is that dog? He heard a crow calling out in the sky. When he looked up at the mountains, he saw a few more crows sitting in an old tree. They were watching him. What was Rip going to do? Now he was getting hungry too. His dog and his gun were gone. Well, the best thing was to go home. His wife would be angry with him, but he was tired and hungry. So he picked up the old gun and began to walk home. He was worried, and his heart was not happy. Soon, Rip was near the village. There were some people walking. Who were they? He didn't know them. He thought he knew everyone in the village. Their clothes were different, too. The people didn't know who Rip was. Why were they staring at him? Rip touched his chin to think. When he did, he felt something. He looked down and saw that he had a long beard. Then he reached the village. There was a group of children he had never seen before. They were pointing at him and laughing. Even the dogs were different. Some barked at him as he passed them. Even the village looked different. It was bigger. There were more people. There were many houses that he had never seen before, too. The doors were different. There were many places that Rip knew, but now they were different, too. Something was wrong here. Maybe his eyes were not seen correctly. He turned around. Yes, the Caskill Mountains were still there, and over there was the Hudson River. It was the same as when he left. Oh, my head, thought Rip. It must be the beer, my poor head. Then Rip came to his house, but when he saw it, he thought he was dreaming. His eyes opened, his mouth opened too. But no words came out. The house was old and broken. The door had fallen to the side. The windows were broken. An old dog came out. Wolf? asked Rip. Is that you? The dog snarled and walked away. Wolf has forgotten me, thought Rip sadly. He looked at the dog again. It wasn't Wolf. But then Rip thought of his old friend. He turned and looked at the mountains. A small tear came to his eye. Rip turned back to the house and walked in. He called his wife and children. No one answered. Rip remembered his other friends. He ran out of the house to the inn. But when he got there, the inn was gone. There was now a big building. It was called the Union Hotel. He looked to the tree. Thank goodness it was still there. But now there was a picture of a man on it. His name was at the bottom of the picture, General Washington. And near the tree was a pole with a flag on it. The flag had stars and stripes. There were many people standing in front of the building. They were talking loudly. Reeve looked for Nicholas Feather. He wasn't there. Van Bommel wasn't there either. The men were younger than Reeve's friends. They were holding papers and arguing with each other. They said many strange words. Elections, Congress, Liberty, 1776. What did this mean? Then Rip saw that many people were staring at him. The young men stopped talking and looked at him too. Then they stood around Rip. Did you vote? asked the young man. Are you a Democrat or a Federalist? asked the short man. Then a tall man stepped closer to Reeve. He stopped and looked at Reeve for a second. Why did you bring a gun to the election? he asked. Are you looking for trouble? Oh no, gentlemen, please, said Reeve. I live here. 
God save the King of England. He's a spy, shouted many people. Then the tall man held up his hand. Everyone became quiet. Who are you looking for? he asked. My friends, said Rip. And who are they? Nicholas Feather, said Rip. Does anyone know where he is? It was very quiet. Finally, someone said, Nicholas Feather died 18 years ago. And Brom Dutcher? He died during the war, I think. Anyway, he never came back, said another man. And Van Bommel, the schoolteacher? He went to fight in the war, said the woman. Now he's in Congress. Rip's heart was heavy. He was lonely and sad. Everyone he knew was gone. What's going on? What are they talking about? I go away for a night, then when I come back, everything is different. Was there a war? Rips out of his friends and his heart broke. Does anyone remember Rip Van Winkle? He cried. He's over there, said the shore man. He pointed to the tree. Standing next to the tree was a young man who looked like Rip when he was young. Who are you? asked the tall man. I, I, I don't know. That's me over there. I mean, I'm me. But everything's changed. My gun has changed. My house has changed. Even I have changed. I don't know who I am, said Rip softly. Everyone began to talk very quietly. Some of them pointed to their heads and shook their heads. Then a young woman came close to Rip. She stared at him. She was holding a baby. It began to cry. Shh, Rip, she said to the baby. The old man won't hurt you. Rip remembered the voice. Not the same voice, but almost the same. What's your name? asked Rip. Judy Scardnier. And your father's name? His name was Rip Van Winkle. But he left home 20 years ago with his gun and dog wolf. No one saw him after that. Where's your mother? asked Rip slowly. She was yelling at a peddler and got a heart attack. I'm your father, shouted Rip. I'm Rip Van Winkle. Then an old woman shouted, It is, it is him. Welcome home, old friend. Where have you been all this time? Then Peter Vanderdon came. He was the oldest man in the village. He remembered Rip right away. Well, Rip told his story about the strange little man. Peter said that there were many people who had seen those little men. He said that they were Hendrik Hudson and his men. They were the first white men to find the river. The river was named for him, and so he comes back with his men sometimes. Peter's father had seen them playing nine pins too. Everyone went back to the election. Rip went to live with his daughter and her family. He remembered her husband as a child. The man Rip saw standing under the tree was his own son. And his son was just like him. He helped others and never did his own work. Rip liked talking with the young people of the village. And now there was no Mrs. Van Winkle. Rip didn't hate her, but he was glad that she wasn't there. When he heard anyone say her name, he looked up at the sky. Then he would shake his head slowly and smile. Rip has told this story many times, and every time he told it, it changed a little. But I wrote what he told me. Most of the young people don't believe him. They think that he's crazy, but the older people believe him. And until today, they say that when he storms and thunders, it is just Hendrik Hudson and his men playing ninepins.